welcome to Restoration. My name is Bryce Owens. I'm the pastor, and I appreciate uh, everyone coming out today. And uh, I want to welcome our, our guests today. So it's nice to see some new faces here. We have Erica's Papa. Papa. Erica's Papa is here. So Papa. Papa. So I got, I got to remember that. Erica's Papa. Uh, so it's great to have everybody out today. Um, and uh, we do things a little differently here. Um, just to let the guests know. So we dive into God's Word first. And we preach the word, get our hearts right, and then we go into our song time where we worship and praise our God. So uh, if you want to open your Bibles to, uh, these are the clicker. Oh, there she is. Yes. Boom. First Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8. This uh, message is entitled Rejecting God. Rejecting God. Uh, just some announcements for uh, coming up. So we have our nursery completed, and I kind of uh, jumped the gun a little bit when I did my Facebook Live video, because these are correcting on that a little bit. Um, that's what a good wife does, is we don't have necessarily workers signed up yet for the nursery, okay? So if you would need to use the nursery right now, it's going to be parent runs. So you can go in there with your child for now, and uh, I believe the security camera's on the table, and it's still working, so it actually has sound. To the camera so you can still hear me preach and then you can have your child in there for now um, we have a sign-up sheet uh, if you want to be a worker in the nursery and we're gonna have some policies and procedures to go over huh oh, all already back there um, I already talked to our insurance company and I think it's a good thing to give peace of mind any guests bringing their children in because we, we live in a wicked world would you guys agree with that um, a lot of bad that is going on and so for anybody that is going to be working with children because I believe children are precious, and I'm going to protect them with my life, that you have to sign up to do a background check, and the church will pay for that. So that way there's nothing that keeps everybody safe, and then that way parents know, hey, we do a background check on our workers. Um, so we have a training program that we're going to have set up to keep the kids safe and to keep you safe, because that is of utmost importance. So I just want to let everyone know that, so we're going to be signing up. Background checks will be done. That will be on restoration's dime, so you don't have to worry about paying for that. But it's just to keep everybody safe, okay? Um, so go ahead and open your Bibles to First Samuel chapter eight. These are any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Anniversary services. Yeah. yeah. Our anniversary services in two weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Man, a year. Can you guys believe that? A year has gone by since that pavilion, and uh, it was hot that day, and it's probably going to be hot on an anniversary service as well. So that's okay. What's the date of that, Pastor? August 9th. August 9th. So, and we'll be at the pavilion there in Fayetteville, uh, or here in Fayetteville, right in the center of town. So, because we have electric there still, I believe. At the park. At the park. Um, and we had it under the pavilion where the ball fields were at, and it was a good time. So, uh, the very first service, it was just me and Deidre and the kids. And then the second service, uh, Colt and Tirza, his wife, and Colt's other wife, aka his mom, Kelly, showed up. And, uh, it, was, it was a good day. Sorry. And I only say that because she's embarrassed right now because. I was nervous, okay? When I meet new people, I'm just, like right now I'm nervous. I got visitors, I got butterflies in my stomach. I'm always nervous meeting new people. So, you know, I'm starting a ministry. God's called me to do this. I am nervous because I got tears and Colt coming. I really don't know Colt. And then uh, now he's bringing his mom. So I'm like, oh, butterflies in the stomach. I'm like, hey, I'm Bryce. And she goes, hi, I'm Kelly Colt's wife. And then as soon as she said that, she was like, ah, I mean, his mom, and I just laughed. And it was like so easy going, and I'm like, I love this, and it broke the ice. So um, it was great, and I loved it. So we'll be doing that on August 9th, and that's super exciting, and uh, can't wait. I say super exciting a lot, don't I? Yeah. You're just like, yeah, I said it in the video. But you know what? I'm a super excited person, all right? First Samuel, chapter 8, starting in verse 1. And God's word says this, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, thy sons walk not in thy ways. 
Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And Lord, I just want to thank you for who you are. And God, I just ask that you be with the people that couldn't be with us today, whether there be sickness going around or just even fear for leaving their houses. And God, I want to thank you for the people that have shown today. The people that want to just come here and worship you and hear your word. God, empty my mind out. Let me be able to feed the sheep today. And let us see what uh, the children of Israel went through and why they rejected you as their king. And what that looked like in their lives. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I got my early amen there. I love it. He's like, let's get to this, Bryce. <clears throat> so when I read this, it's very interesting to see how Israel rejected God. But in a sense, in Israel's mind, they're not rejecting God. They're rejecting Samuel's sons. But you see, nobody likes to be rejected. It's not fun. And we actually try to avoid it. When you go to school or work, we always try to fit in with people. We want to be accepted by all of our peers. It is a natural tendency to want to be accepted. Is it not? Amongst church family, we want to be accepted. And unfortunately, I've seen in churches cliques that happen. Have you ever seen that in churches where like little small cliques happen all over? And then all of a sudden, those cliques, they kind of separate and they form almost like a little mini church of their own. And then people are no longer accepted amongst those cliques. It's like, well, we got our personal clique, and we, we can't have any more people come with us. You know, it's like, eh, we don't really need you. But people want that acceptance. They desire it in anything that they do. When we live a life that is pleasing to God, here's the thing. People are going to reject us. But they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. See, Samuel was upset because Israel wanted a king. And God told Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. So why did Israel reject God? Why do they want to be like other nations? When I read the first verse here, it says, and it came to pass. And that very first part in chapter 8, and it came to pass, is so important because prior to this, Israel just had this awesome victory over the Philistines. You know, the Israel came back to God. They said, hey, Samuel, we've messed up. And Samuel's like, yeah, you have. And so 20 years had passed, and uh, they said, you know, we want to get right with God. And Samuel said, go to Mizpah and just go there and wait. And they picked up the pictures of water and poured them out to show their sorrow for God. And then all of a sudden, the Philistines heard that they were at Mizpah, and they said, hey, they're gathered together. Let's go slaughter them. And then the Philistines came, and Israel feared, and they said, hey, Samuel, Cry out to the Lord for us. We are scared to death. You need to do something. So Samuel's like, all right, I'm going to do it. You guys just need to keep praying. So he sacrificed that sucking lamb unto the Lord. The whole thing. And what happened? God came down and thundered upon the Philistines. He scared them. He even killed them. And then the Philistines went off a run. And after he killed so many, and then Israel was like, yeah, we can do this. And then Israel chased after them. All right? And then all their cities were restored, and all this stuff happened. And then at the very end of that, it said that there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Peace between them. Man, that would be amazing. Peace. That would be nice to have, wouldn't it? Peace in America? Boy, there's some division here, isn't there? But there was peace amongst these two nations. But then here, now we have chapter 8, and it says, And it came to pass, meaning a period of time. I don't know how long this time was. I know Samuel in chapter 7 was probably early 30s. It's probably about my age. I'm a young guy. Early 30s. Living for Jesus. Living for God. Jesus hadn't been there yet. He was still there. But he was doing what he was called to do. And then all of a sudden now it says when Samuel was old. And I think old man, all right? I mean, this is up there in years. Maybe not getting around so well. That he made his sons judges over Israel. And the 
sons didn't do very well, did they? It says that they walk not in his ways. But now we get to this point is, why did Israel reject God? Why did they want to be like all the other nations? I want to look at the first thing. God is rejected because of people. Look at verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. See, Samuel's sons, they didn't walk in the way that Samuel did. Samuel was somebody that served God from, from his childhood. Do you guys remember that? Back in the very beginning of uh, Samuel, we've been preaching through this. He served the Lord from a young lad. He was given to the temple by his mother, Hannah. And I, I looked up, because names are important in the Bible. And what Joel and Abiah mean, Joel means to, it is the worship of Jah, or God. And Abiah is very close to that as well, where it's the one that you put God first. And so Samuel's idea, when he named his sons this, this was what was in Samuel's heart. He put God first, and he worshiped God first. This is who Samuel was about. But sadly, his sons were not. His sons took bribes. Took the, that lucre, that money, and perverted judgment. Can I tell you this? Israel turned away because of the people, because of leadership. Today in churches, people turn away from God because of people. People don't necessarily get angry with God. They can, and I understand that. You know, bad situations can happen. They, they do, all the time. You know, I often, I often call it Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. Have you guys ever heard that? Sometimes in my own personal life, I get angry at Murphy because it seems like there's nothing but Murphy in my life. All right? And it's like, get out of here. And so people sometimes can have, they, they just get angry. But in my experience, the biggest thing that I have seen and heard is the reason why people reject God is because of God's people. And that can be pastors. How many churches have you known that have just fallen apart because the pastor was an idiot? The pastor, yeah, he's just laughing at me. Yeah, the pastor didn't hold to what God's word said. The pastor preached on opinion. The pastor preached on I believe and not thus saith the Lord. This is the be all end all right here. No more, no less. Not my opinion, but God's word. And pastors can cause people to stumble and fall. Leaders in churches can cause people to stumble and fall. The people that go, that make up the church, can cause people to stumble and fall. I work at Kroger, third shift. And third shift is a whole different beast of itself. It's weird. You got people that just really, I mean, hate life that work third shift. <laughs> and I get it, all right? There are times where I wake up and I'm like, I hate life right now just because I'm tired. You're just in a constant state of just exhaustion. And there are some people that are angry. They're bitter. And I remember when I first started there, I show up and I'm like, Hi, how you guys doing? And they just look at me with that dead look on their face and like, oh, who's this guy? We're going to bring him down to our level. Okay. There are times where they, they do their best at times. But now when I go to work, if I'm not like, hey, guys, how you doing? Let's do this. Let's stock shelves because I love it so much. All right. <laughs> if I'm not like that, they're, they're like, what's wrong with you, Bryce? I'm like, oh, nothing. I'm, I'm good. I'm just maybe a little tired today or just. That situation, Murphy came to my house today, you know, <clears throat> but they expect a certain level of positivity out of me, but they know that I love Jesus. They know I've talked about Jesus and it's all about Jesus. And can I tell you this? There are people that hated church people, but because I haven't put them down for what they believe, I just love them through whatever they're going through. There are some people that are like, uh, what time does your service start on Sundays? And it just blows me away. I'm like, we start at 1030 for the kids and 11 o'clock for our worship service. And I'm like, well, I, I might come. I'm like, I'll hold you to it. Say, come on out. I get super excited. See? I can't help it. I'm like a child at heart, guys. I can't. I just who I am. But it's people that cause others to reject God. And that's what happened here. People were rejecting God because of 
Samuel's sons.